what we know most of are the acute manifestations of the infection, whereby patients have um, had a respiratory uh, dysfunction, uh, which results in admission of these patients. But what has not been recognized till recently is that uh, the brain uh, can be affected independent of the respiratory complications. And they can occur acutely in hospitalized patients, or it can be weeks after recovery from the infection itself that new manifestations can emerge. So I'll first describe the para-infectious complications, which, are, um, uh, which occur uh, during the uh, phase of active viral uh, replication. Um, so these patients can often present with loss of smell. And uh, although originally thought that maybe the virus is affecting the olfactory nerve itself, it turns out that the virus replicates in the supporting cells in the uh, nasal mucosa called the sustenkular cells. And because of that, there's secondary effects on the uh, olfactory nerve resulting in loss of smell. Most people will recover from the loss of smell but there's a small subset of individuals in whom the um, uh, smell does not recover. And, um, and then some, when they do recover their smell, uh, they can develop parosmias, uh, which is, um, and they get a weird uh, smell sensation. So for example, if they were to smell coffee, it might uh, smell uh, some burnt um, um, uh, toast or something like that, uh, the taste can similarly be altered uh, at the same time. Patients who get hospitalized, uh, they will, um, about a third of those individuals will have encephalopathy. And two thirds of them at the time of discharge are unable to manage their activities of daily living. And their mortality rate of individuals who have encephalopathy is about six times compared to those that do not. So there's a very significant toll um, uh, of the infection on the brain. And uh, these symptoms seem to be more dominant in males and in older individuals, and it's independent of the degree of respiratory involvement. If you look at the brains of these patients, uh, they have oftentimes have diffuse encephalopathy, it's called a, uh, a leukoencephalopathy of critical illness. Uh, some patients may have punctate white matter lesions. And there's a group from Spain that uh, had patients in the ICU for over two months. Um, and they uh, had all kinds of uh, a cognitive impairment. And they decided to treat them with plasma exchange uh, and IVIG. Um, and what they found was that the uh, three of the patients out of five had excellent recovery and two did not. The ones that did not had much more diffuse white matter changes, suggesting that there is an important immune mediated process that involves um, these manifestations. And that uh, patients may benefit from immune therapy even several months after the uh, initial manifestations. Um, we had an opportunity to look at the brains of individuals who had died suddenly uh, from the infection. And um, we had 11 such individuals uh, who um, uh, were in the acute phase because they were um, a positive for the virus by PCR from the nasal mucosa, <clears throat> but were found dead either at home uh, or um, one person was found dead in a subway and uh, another individual was just playing with his sister and uh, found dead and just dropped dead at that time. These individuals didn't have uh, uh, symptoms that would have warrant uh, attention by a physician and they did not seek any medical attention. But when we looked at the brain, almost all of them had pathology <clears throat> in the brain to so varying degrees. Uh, what was most predominant was, uh, was the um, uh, leakage from the blood brain barrier. So the multifocal uh, and a breakdown of the blood brain barrier throughout the brain um, with leakage of fibrinogen in the surrounding parenchyma and perivascular inflammation. And when we looked at the neurons, we found that particularly in the brainstem, uh, there was neuronal damage uh, from surrounding macrophages and microglia, a phenomenon that is called neuronophagia. 
In some patients, we also found inflammation within the olfactory bulb. However, we failed to find any virus in the brain. And that seems to be a consistent observation from other uh, groups uh, that have studied uh, the pathology, um, except for one group in Germany that claimed they found some virus within the brain, but in a very small subset of individuals, and the viral load was also extremely low, and suggesting that uh, the virus itself does not invade the brain, uh, yet um, it causes a, a breakdown of the blood-brain barrier and inflammation within the brain. One possibility is that's the viral proteins uh, that may be responsible for this uh, damage and not the virus uh, itself. 